Hey, everybody, and welcome into the conversation where we intend to destigmatize the conversation around cannabis. We hope have a little fun along the way. I'm your host, Dave Briggs, former CNN, NBC Sports, Fox News anchor and host at Turner Sports. And tonight, joined by co-host, you might know him as the Giants' all-time leading receiver in yards, catches, touchdowns, or as a guest here on the conversation. <laughs> he is Amani Toomer. What's going on, Amani? Hey, what's going on, Dave? Good to see you. <laughs> now, look, Eli has his own show, so I guess it's time you got your own show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. If You know what's really funny? I, our whole team it has some point been in the media. Like <laughs> It's like you go to New York and it's basically like you're playing football for the Giants, but yet you're also auditioning for <laughs> for, the, for some radio show or TV show or something like that. So it's, uh, it's good. It's, it's, it's a great place. To, it's a good time. Uh, you know, it's a great place to, to be, uh, to, to play. And, and I just had a great time uh, with New York. You are the first to talk cannabis on a show, so you got them beat. And uh, also no stranger to the media is tonight's guest, Tiki Barber, the all-time leading rusher for the Giants, 15th all-time in total yards, more than 15,000 total yards. He's also one of seven guys all-time with 2,000 total yards and three-plus seasons. And this dude did it in his final three seasons suggesting, yeah, he probably could have gone a few more years. He's doing that. <laughs> Tiki Barber, what's up, my man? All's good, Dave. Tom, good to see you. See, good to see you, you too. What you, what you failed to mention, Dave, is that I also retired as the all-time leading receiver in receptions. And then Tom broke my joint the next year. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. Yeah, you know why? Because we play with with uh, Danny Cannell, all he would do is right. throw check down. That's all he did. And we were just, I was like, I mean, come on now. By the way, Dave, you don't know this. Tomb, you might remember this. The all-time single game receiving record for receptions. I got it. Because <laughs> he threw me 13, 13 check downs. <laughs> oh, it was, it was, it was infuriating. We'd, we'd run the same play over and over all the way down the field. It was uh, all goes. And then they'd be like kicky, like scat or something like that. So we'd be running down the field, taking the top of the coverage, and they'd throw the ball to Tiki. And then we'd turn around and block. I mean, that's a double whammy. We're not really not getting the ball, but now we have to block. It's just, it was a terrible day. That's right. It's, and, it's, and, then, and, then, and then to make things worse than that, too, remember that time in Arizona? I'm like, too. I can't return punts. You got to return the punts. I can't do it today. You got to do it. You're like, dude, I'm outside. I'm running goes all day. I had heat exhaustion that day. I know. That yeah. was the one, one and only time I ever had to get an IV in my life. That was yeah. the only time I had to get an IV because I was done. I just remember walking back to the, like, to the locker room like in Arizona, just like <laughs> totally incoherent. And they were like, you need an IV? I'm like, no, I don't need an IV. Just give me some water. And they're like, no, but you're, you're, too, too, you're, too, you're too far past that. I said, I just need some water. And then Howard came in and was like, Monty, we're going to give you an ID. I was like, all right, Howard. <laughs> do, you guys, Howard do you guys bust Cannell's chops about being checked down, Danny? I, t- I, I do. Yeah. But I tell you what, Tiki loved him. I loved them. It was great for me. It was great for me. I, I just padded the stats, especially, especially in those games where we would be behind. Because early in our career, we had some bad teams. We had a couple of good teams, oh, yeah. but some bad teams. So we're we're playing hurry up offense the whole the whole game. And even though I wasn't starting a lot then, I was in the game because we were in our in our in our sub personnel. So I loved it. That was great. I'm getting my touches. <laughs> He's a bonus getter. That guy will get you your bonus on catches. That at the end. That's right. Year. That's why all these fantasy people are like, "Teak, I loved you when you were playing because you were sneaky. You'd get all these like in the PPR leagues. They, yeah. Like I'd get all these catches. So they love me. Do either yeah. of you guys play fantasy? I do. A I tried. Bit. I tried to play a year, and it was just it was too stressful. And then like being on the other side of it, you like, you know, going into a game, you could be on the game plan. But if the defense switches something, you are completely out. So it's yes. it's really you're just it's it's a roll of the dice. That's right. 
That's right. I suck at it. I try. I play, but I suck at it. Because <laughs> I do think you ever much, have, I think. Do you ever draft Giants, or do you stay away from them entirely? Uh, the last couple of years, there haven't been a ton. I mean, Saquon, um, his second year, and I couldn't get him. I was I wanted to get him, but I couldn't get him, and I'm glad yeah. I didn't because he got hurt. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've stayed away from him. And the same thing with Odell. Like Odell was like, oh, I, I got to get Odell. And he go before I could draft them. And then he get hurt. So I was like, all right, I'm not taking Giants. Okay. It's not worth it. Because you brought them both up, we have to talk about those guys. Is, is Saquon ever going to realize that enormous potential? Or is he going to be that guy that just had so much and never got healthy Never got back to that point. And frankly, the same question for OBJ. Well, I mean, for Saquon, you know this too, because you you saw me behind a great offensive line. They didn't get the, the fanfare of those guys up front that I ran behind. But mm-hmm. without that, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I rest, I rushed for 10,000 yards because I had five, really six, if you count Luke and, and David Deal. I had six like really good offensive linemen who worked well together. Ever yeah. since the Giants have drafted Saquon, it's a it's a rotating door of guys, and they drafted you know uh, the Pert in the third round and Andrew Thomas in the first round two years ago, and I mean maybe they worked it work it out, but right now they don't look real good, and so it's it's hard as a runner to get the ball side saddle. You're not even like behind the quarterback anymore. You're side saddle. So you're taking side steps, and there's and you're getting hit before you even get a chance to touch the football. So. He will be good as long as his line gets good. Put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I just see improvement from him every week, right? So yeah. he's feeling a lot more comfortable. He had a couple moves in this last week's game. He had a spin move, and he right. you know, was really athletic. You're like, okay, that's the old Saquon. But he wasn't attacking and getting upfield. And it's funny. You watch the game in the beginning, and you watch the difference between Kamara catching up, getting the ball from the quarterback and, and Saquon, and it's like two different people. That's right. But then – Towards the fourth quarter, it totally flipped, and Saquon is running downhill. It's the <laughs> yeah. saying we all use in football, running downhill. And, and Alvin Kamara is uh, sitting there kind of, you know, dancing and trying to figure out, find a hole. And uh, I, I really believe in Saquon. I Me think this, the, scoring a touchdown to, to, to finish off a game in overtime in a place where the Giants haven't won in a long time, that's huge for your, uh, for your, for your momentum because touchdowns come in bunches, you know, yeah. and I think he's – yeah, two, two yes or two uh, on Sunday, and I, 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 I'm, I'm really bullish on him. I'm optimistic as well. By the way, that's like sweet revenge in New Orleans because um, you met, people don't remember, but that Joe Horn game, like stealing, putting that cell phone, that happened against us. Yeah, that, yeah, was, I was, that was embarrassing. Joe I Horn there. <laughs> stashed, exactly, stashed a cell phone. I mean, who the hell does that? Yeah, yeah. Does that still stick in your craw? Oh, my God, yes, of course. It was he, stashed his, he stashed his cell phone, dude, because he knew he was going to score in that end zone. You and the funny thing about it was he scored a couple times that game, and he kind of ran out of stuff to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I have a cell phone. I have this. Oh, my God. He started he started put, put stuff in at halftime just to pull That's out right. of, the, of, the, of the, uh, the touchdown. It was, it it was, was embarrassing, amazing. Dave, because he was clouding us. Like, yeah. and every, every time he scored, we knew it. And it was, and there was nothing we could do about it. That was the problem. Yeah. Have you ever had words with him about it? No. I mean, <laughs> he's a cool dude. He just, that's just how he played, man. He just wanted to be on a different level. And yeah. Wide receivers back, except for Amani. Wide receivers back, <laughs> back in our day, they were like that. Like T.O. was like that. Chad Ojocinco yeah. was like that. They were all like that. Like if you weren't like that, you, you kind of weren't the man. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I was the man, though, Teague, so I don't know. You were, but you weren't like that. That's my point. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. So no, what about but, um, OBJ, then? He is certainly that way. The guy wore a watch on the field, but he is a guy that we have not seen flashes of, Tiki. We have not seen the same OBJ, and it's not entirely clear we will. Well, I mean, injuries uh, take a toll on you, and he's not young anymore. You know, when he was 25 years old and – He's, he's setting the league on fire and then he hurts an ankle and then he hurts his knee and gets traded and then he hurts an, his, uh, um, his ACL. ACL again. It's just like eventually all those injuries catch up to you. And even though you're not old, you, you get old. And so uh, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a leg cutter offer on, on everybody. 
right? You cut your feet out from under you with, with injuries. And he's just been unlucky in that regard. He's still a great player. It's just, there was this ceiling that he had that was like through the stratosphere that he just never could reach because he couldn't stay healthy. What would you say to uh, a Saquon Barkley? Because, you know, you've been in situations where you come off injuries, mm -hmm. you know, you were, the crowd was booing you for one reason or another. Yeah, it's not an easy road in New York. I mean, I remember I talked to Daniel Jones this offseason and I'm like, look, man, I was like, there's nobody that plays in New York that ha doesn't have to stare down that that barrel yeah. of, of you might be gone if you don't perform. So what would you tell to uh, uh, a young Saquon? You know, he wants to do well. You, you know, he's the right kind of guy. They talk yep. about all the stuff that he said at halftime to kind of fire the team up. He's one of those type of guys. Yeah. So what would you say to him? Well, it's so I I remember this happening when some of those bad years that we have too. people would be like, I'm coming to the game because I want to see you do something great. I know we might lose this game, but I want to see you do something great. And so what, what that turned into in my mind was, all right, I need to make big plays for entertainment purposes. Right. But if I do enough of it and then Tomb does it and then and Ike does it and then Shaka does it, then you know what? Maybe we're maybe we'll win. And so it's it's like compartmentalizing it into into mini games as opposed to thinking about the big picture. Because sometimes on those bad teams that we played on, like the Giants kind of are right now, it's hard to think about the big picture. Like the one first, the whole game and then, you know, the month and then the season. You're just like, man, this is going to be a grind. If you try to think <laughs> of it, seriously, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. that year we went four and twelve. It's like, oh, geez. This, is a, this is a grind, man. And it's, it's, you, you get out of yourself if you start thinking too big. So you got to like smash it into moments and, and excel in those moments. That's the advice I would give. But will this team ever get through this era? That oh, yeah. Look, here's, the, here's the thing, like Dave. There's this good team, yep, go yeah, ahead. this team is not bad. This isn't a bad team, right? The Jets earlier on the season were bad. This team doesn't know how to win, right? They, 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 they played three games tight. They've lost one because Dexter Lawrence jumped off sides, even though he didn't really jump off sides. The ref saw movement and assumed he was off sides, but he wasn't actually off sides. Uh, so the Redskins, the Washington football team, got another chance to kick the, oh. uh, the field goal. I grew up, I grew up a Redskins fan. My bad. Oh. The Washington football team. <laughs> the Washington football team. <laughs> My loyalty changed when the paychecks started coming from the Meadowlands. <laughs> really? I didn't know. I knew you were from that area. I didn't yeah, know you were uh, I grew up in Southwest player. Virginia, man. That's a, like and they had a black quarterback that won a, a, a oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, come on. <laughs> That's right. So I mean, like they lose that game. They should have won. In Atlanta, they had a, a lead with what four minutes to go. They gave up ten point or seven points, uh, ten points in the last seven minutes or four minutes or whatever it may be. So they should have won that game. Uh, obviously, they won this past weekend. So so they're just learning how to win. They're not bad. They easily could be three and one. They're not good. <laughs> but but, the, but a lot of teams aren't good, right? You think that Baltimore Ravens are good with Hollywood Brown dropping wide open touchdowns and Lamar Jackson throws to him, and then they're they're literally a bad call away from losing to Detroit. I love Dan Campbell; he's our dude, man. I give him love, much love. I love that dude. Absolutely. He's crazy as hell. But they were they were a blown call away from losing to Detroit. This is a team yeah. that almost went to the AFC Championship game last year. So it can happen in any, in any team. The Giants need to find out how to fix the little things. And it starts with the quarterback. And I love Daniel Jones. I met him before he goes drafted here. He was still at Duke. And he's just a meter. I'm like, dude, this is like an athletic Eli, right? <laughs> <laughs> same, same demeanor, but the dude is a baller. And it just yeah. took some time for Jason Garrett to say, all right, Daniel, just go do your thing, whatever, right? You want to run the ball? Let's run the rock. Um, we've seen him turn into a reliable player. He's not turning the football over. I know people look at the stats. It's like, yeah, he's got some interceptions, but the one at the halftime, who cares about that? Um, you know, one early in the season. Those are the only two. He's been, he's corrected what was wrong with him and he's balling when they need him to. Two. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought you were going to go, but anyway. Um, yeah. So now you're, uh, you have an opportunity to do games. Yeah. Uh, what, what is that experience like for you? Because uh, I, I, it's one of those jobs that you wish you would have, but then yeah. 
you, when we were talking, you, you left on Friday. I'm like, man, Friday to Sunday, like your whole weekend. That's right. I, what, what, tell, tell us about your, your thoughts on that. And so I, I'm only doing five games for CBS. So I have, I kind of have the best of both worlds because I'm still like in like interacting in the, in this, in the, in that NFL locker room football. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm in it, but I'm not like yeah. 17 weeks grinding every weekend, studying film. But I did realize I missed like watching tape. Remember how you used to go home? Yeah, like, yeah. The, the studio it, it, at the at the uh, not the studio at the stadium, or you'd come home and you'd watch tape, and you'd just be sitting there like, eh, 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 <laughs> eh, eh, yeah, eh. yeah. Like I find yeah. myself doing that again, and I kind of miss it. <laughs> I'm like, this yeah, is, yeah. this is fun, right? Seeing like, and I remember my coach, my running back coach, Jim Skipper. And by the way, Skip's son is the running back coach at the Buffalo Bills. No. <laughs> I swear to you, dude. I I'm really? out there. I'm out there at practice too, and I'm looking at this dude. I'm like, damn, that 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 is Jim Skipper, but it's not because he's like 40 years younger. I'm like, yeah, that he's got to be related. And he comes up to me and he's like, hey, Teak, my pops is your running back coach. I'm like, get the hell out of here. I remember him. Yep, it's right. Remember he was like, so he's now he the running back boy. coach. Yeah, he yes. was our ball boy. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Now he's the running back coach for the Buffalo Bills. But anyway, so like you get back into this world that's like you, you, it was part of our, my life for a decade in the NFL. Where you grew you, up. Exactly. It's what you grew up doing. <laughs> and so to do it again, it's kind of it like takes me back a little bit. It makes me feel young. And also like all of these kids. So Robbie Anderson, I did the Carolina Panthers the Jets game week one. Robbie Anderson's from New Jersey. And so like he, we're interviewing him and talking about, yeah, you know, how was Sam when he came down? You know, now he's got all these weapons and what do you expect? Yada, yada, yada. We got his conversation and we get up and he's done. He's like, yo, you and Shockey were my first jerseys and I'm a big fan. I was like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> so it's, just, it's just like, it just comes full circle. So yeah. in that regard, it's, it's, it's really cool, but it is a, it's a ton of work, man. Um, learning rosters and, injuries happen every week so you're like oh this guy's starting like no 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 he's not starting it's this guy you're like oh crap i don't know who the hell that is yeah. so um it's a grind but i enjoy it and and i'm not doing it for the full season at least not yeah. yet so i'm enjoying yeah. it right now well it's really yeah, tough I when you when you have to do a blowout like you did that's like doing a preseason game and houston's bad enough so dudes are coming in that you've never <laughs> even heard of that's right um, that's right but you're working every day because you're doing tiki and tierney on sirius satellite radio and that was interesting. A week or two ago, Shaq came on your show and Shaq. basically said he'd want Ben Simmons traded if, yeah. you know, everything he's gone through. I'm curious getting back to you just did the Buffalo game. And the biggest story aside from Josh Allen being a badass is Cole Beasley not getting vaccinated. Yeah. How would both of you guys handle it if a teammate refused to get vaccinated? So it's fun. It's interesting. I talked, we talked to Cole about this a little bit and, by the way, Cole's a pretty decent rapper, by the way. He's got some really got, good. Yeah. I, I was really I was, yeah, go check it out. Yeah. He's got all a right. couple songs that are all right. Um, but we talked to him about it and we talked to the, the team about it. And basically they said, you know, like in a locker room, it, outside the locker room, things like that get really blown up. Like it's it, they make it a big deal. But inside the locker room, because he's such a good guy. You know what I mean? And relates to everybody, both, you know, the, the white guys, the brothers, the, like he relates to everybody. It kind of, it, there was a lightness to it. There was a levity to it. So even though it was a serious topic, um, inside the locker room was handled with, with levity. Outside of it, it's like, oh my God, how can, how can Cole Beasley do this, put his teammates in danger and yada, yada, yada. And what if he gets sick? And, um, and so how would I handle it? I I would, I would never try to take the choice away from somebody. Just like LeBron said, I'm, I would get vaccinated because I know how important it is to me and my family and those around me, but I would never force that on somebody. And I think that's ultimately what he was trying to say. It just didn't come across the right way. Too yeah, I, I, I mean, honestly, there are personal decisions that people make. I totally disagree with what he says. I totally disagree, but it's a job. Like I, I, my job is to play football and, 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 and do what I could do to help that team win. If he wasn't want to, you know, if he wants to do, he doesn't want to get vaccinated. I, I kind of have to just be like, whatever, 
I'm doing my job. Let the people whose job it is to, to, you know, to, to handle that situation, handle it and let the league handle it because me getting mad at him is not going to be a great long-term thing. It'll make yeah. you feel good in the short term, but in the long term, he's going to be your teammate for the next, you know, 16, 15, 17 weeks, whatever. Yeah. So you're going to have to have a relationship with this person. And as much as I would hate it and I would probably be on him all the time, knowing me, I, don't, I love to argue. <laughs> I'd just be like, oh, come on. And I'd go, I'd have all these stats. I'd probably do that. But at the end of the day, like, you know, I, I think he's going to find out it's going to be much harder for him not to get yeah. vaccinated than, yeah. than, than ultimately just going doing it. And the vaccines are, are safe. So, I mean. Yeah, you're um, right. Tim, you remember this as well as I do. We had like, we did. All, all of us were like in media and like could talk and like had opinions like Glenn Parker, yeah. even, even Jay Feely. Like yeah. we have political discussions in the locker room and it wasn't, Absolutely. Like, it wasn't like, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, good job. It was like debates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Howard would get us in the hot box, put us in the hot yeah. box and just talk yeah. trash to each other. Uh, but honestly, I think that's it's healthy when people don't when they have differing opinions. It's healthy to yeah. talk about it. But Tum is exactly right. At the end of the day, if you don't like your teammate, he's still your teammate, right? Yeah. And and, and he like relies on exactly. He relies yeah. on you, and you rely on him on Sundays. And at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. You talk about all the media savvy guys that were on that team. One guy I would not put in that sentence was Eli, and here he is. <laughs> Oh With no, you were no. That's because that's because he didn't show it, Dave. He never showed that. He was he was he was like a clown, like he's like 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 a clowner. Like he would clown people all the time, dude. Yeah, Pranks, he's yes, a, he's, but he he's was a not. Prankster. He was by no means media savvy. Have you seen this Monday uh, Night Football show that he's doing with Peyton? I'll just admit, I think it's terrible. And, and I love <laughs> Peyton Manning. I'm a Bronco fan. And I'm yeah. a big fan of Eli the Human. But I just don't understand it. It bores me to tears. My man Brian Greasy is outstanding on Monday night. Do you guys like Eli, the the broadcaster? I, I, honestly, I haven't watched it. Um, I, I I haven't watched it. I don't mind it, uh, Dave. I don't mind it. I've seen it a few times, um, but it's intermittent. Like I'll go in there sometimes with him and Peyton, and it's really because I, I mean. I know Eli. We both know Eli. Peyton, yeah. I know also because his wife went to uh, school with me and Rondé. So we've hung out with Peyton a couple of times and he's awesome. Right. And, but I, there is a media savvy to Eli that I think he, he didn't show it maybe on purpose. Right. But you know, it's there because look at his brothers, right? Cooper is awesome. Right. Yeah. And, and, and Peyton has been the face of the NFL for, I don't know, two decades, whatever it was. So yeah. you knew it had to, and Archie's like Mr. Polish, right? So you yeah. know it had to be there. He just chose not to show it. He chose not to be vulnerable when he was a player with, with, uh, on the team. But it was always there, right? The guys loved him because he, he's just one of the dudes, man. He's, he never yeah. was a diva. He never was nah. like, yeah, I'm the, I'm, the MVP. I'm the MVP. Like what? Like he was never that. So yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's just there. You're starting to see it a little bit more now that he's uh, out of the game. People want to people want to think there's a beef between the two of you. I mean, because of some silly out of context comments in 2007. Are right. you friendly, you and Elon? Of course, of course, we're friendly. We were friendly right after that. It, but people in media like to make uh, enemies of people. I don't know why. Um, I know why. They need something to talk about. That's right. That's right. <laughs> they, they need, it's just it's lasting. And now it's that was how many years ago was that? It was it was 07. No. Oh. So 14 years ago, <laughs> yeah. 14 years ago, people are making a big deal still about something that was blown over immediately between he and uh, Eli and I. In fact, after the Super Bowl uh, that you guys won, Tumor and those guys won in, uh, oh, uh, in 07, 08, that, that Super Bowl was, I was working for NBC and I did an interview with Eli after the game. And yeah. it was awesome, right? He was, yeah. he was, there, there is no beef between us, even though like people like to reference that frequently. Um, I had a lot of pride in, in those guys, Tomb included, because it's like I knew everybody. Right? It's just like, just like when my brother won a Super Bowl in 02. It's just like this pride I felt for like just family. You know what I mean? So that people like to point, you know, position me as losing out on that. And I did obviously lose out on a ring, but I still felt 
like this great sense of accomplishment for that team because they were amazing. All those guys were amazing. I we got a second the, place ring. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I would take the Barber brothers in a media cage match over the Manning brothers. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I, I love them both as quarterbacks, but they're, they're witty as hell. You see, you're you're discounting their wit, right? They have a wit, and it's like it's like that, and you don't think it's coming, but it's like that. Wait, did you see the double bird? I yes. saw the double birds, but I think that was on yeah. purpose. Like he's like, you can blur this out, right? <laughs> in, in a live TV. I know. A live TV. Yeah, I just blur that out. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. But so you know you what? Like nobody, purpose. nobody hates Eli. Like who hates Eli? Seriously. Maybe the Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe the Patriots fans. But who maybe hates Tom Eli? Brady? Yeah, probably not even Tom Brady because he's got no, seven. Tom's months, a great guy. Right? He doesn't yeah. care. He's like, yeah, I, I missed two. I don't two. So I don't think he's doing all right. He's got his seven rings. All right. We got to ask you uh, about your cannabis story. And you are, I I would call you an advocate. I'm not sure if you would call yourself that you are an investor. You are the co-founder of Grove Group Management, a volunteer on the advisory board, uh, New York, New Jersey based rather cannabis education and research Institute. What brought you around to that side of the cannabis discussion? Well, originally it was just a business opportunity, and you know, you you, you saw the winds of of change happening. Um, you saw that certain uh, municipalities were, were 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 trending favorably. You saw these national polls that said sixty eight or seventy percent of America is against is uh, is for legalization of cannabis, even if it's just medicinal, uh, and that's starting to trend towards recreation now, and so originally it was just a business opportunity but then you start to think about all of the uh, the use cases especially for guys like me and tomb that played a violent sport and i know this i know guys i won't mention their names i know two of those guys as well you, they go play a game they get done they're beat up they they're probably sub concussed they have you know aches and pains they 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 would soothe their um their ailings with a bottle Right. And it wouldn't be like a drink or two. It'd be like the bottle. And 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 that's that's the worst thing that you can do. And so when you start thinking about natural alternatives that can be uh, used to, you know, uh, bind with your endocannabinoid system and, and give you relief, either physical or mental or emotional relief. Why wouldn't this be something that athletes in particular uh, would gravitate towards? It's why when I see stuff like um, what's it? What's the sprinter? Uh, Sonia uh, Richardson. 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 Yeah. I, it's just it's a, it's a crime that they banned her because of marijuana use, you know. And maybe she was doing it recreationally, but who cares? Um, and so I, I think that the winds of change have been coming for a long time, and I saw it as a business opportunity. The the reason I got involved with Siri, uh, the the non for profit organization that you're alluding to is because there are still organizations at the time, like the NFL, that were punishing uh, athletes for uh, marijuana use. Um, even Whether it was medicinal or recreational, they were punishing, that has that now ceased. And uh, the one thing that we want to focus on is, forget the rec side, these guys having fun and partying and things of that nature, but people who genuinely need relief and cannabis can give it to them without taking other types of opioids or steroids or uh, other damaging drugs to your livers and, and bodily functions. And so that's why I got involved and became an advocate and, and, and invested as well. Yeah, because there's a lot of, uh, I, I just remember a lot of uh, opioids being given out when oh, I was, you know, oh, especially it, when I had my knee surgeries. And I just remember, you know, all the people that would come by that I wouldn't even talk to me ordinarily, they're all of a sudden, you know, want to know my name, want to talk to me in the locker room, all because they know that I had a fresh sleeve of Vicodin. Mm-hmm. So, so that, that was one of the things that, that, that really scared me off. Did you ever, um, I mean, I don't know anybody when I was playing that ever really partook in it, but do uh, you, do you, yeah. Yeah, when I would, during our era, no. Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember guys, because if you got clipped, you were, like the, Rick, the Ricky Williams story, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Like, scared, it scared all of us. <laughs> I, I swear yeah. to you, too, these guys would rather do steroids. Players would rather do steroids than smoke weed. And I, I'm not even joking. They would rather do steroids than smoke weed. 
because you get clipped and then you're in the program forever. Right? Oh, that's and right. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. The program. They test you forever, like every day or every six days or whatever, whatever the number was. They would they test you on test vacation. You. Yes, you would be you home. Go on vacation. Yeah, they'd go on vacation. They'd say, oh, you got to report to here for, uh, for that stuff. Yeah, yeah. substance you of abuse. Know, yeah. I don't know if you remember the first day they test you is 420. The yeah, national I didn't know that holiday and yeah Calvin Johnson told me that because he said he smoked every week yeah during yeah. his career and didn't get clipped yeah the only really well, you you know when the test is coming so as long as you you're smart enough not to you know have it in your system that that week or or a couple of weeks prior to that you can do it all season long but you just kind of never really know there were like the rules weren't as defined as they as they as as they have become as of late and you know it's just i'm glad because now i know guys that play chris long my good buddy from uva who you know, was in uh, yeah uh, the, with the rams and then won a super bowl with both philly and new england he was like dude i smoke all the time it is what it is right he was, he's very open about it uh, that it helped him through his career like like manage the pain through his career to i will never forget this ronnie barnes came up to us um, me in particular, because I had a bad knee. I tore my PCL my rookie season. So I was always on like Indocin and Naperson and Vicodin. And like I was always on this stuff. And he came up to me one day, I think it was like year five or so. And he's like, we're going to uh, take a blood sample because we want to test your liver function. And I was like, why? Like, well, why? He's like, because you've taken, you know, this amount of uh, over the years. I'm like, all right, don't give me that shit ever again. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, I, I don't want any of that. I stopped taking it from there. The hardest thing I would take was like Advil uh, from then on in. But when I realized that the damage that it potentially could have been doing to my body just to get the swelling off, like my knees would just swell for no yeah. reason. And yeah. Yeah, like, give me an Indocin, give me an Apricin. Um, I stopped it immediately. So you stopped taking from your fifth year, probably to your what, 10th year? Yeah, probably, nope. six, probably six to 10. All I yeah. took was like, Advil, and, and that was it. Okay, so what? So how do you go from having no PCL, your knee swelling up, to now you're running marathons, <laughs> half marathons? Yeah. How, how does that work? Do you say? Do you, are you a CBD? Are you a well, THC? Or are you? No, I'm a, I'm no THC, um, but I do take CBD supplements. But really, just to back up real quick, to them, the reason that I was able to get off all that stuff is because mm -hmm. it, year seven, which was Coffin's first year, right? Year yeah. seven for me. Yeah, year seven for me was Coffin's first year. The summer before that, I met Joe Carini. Now, may he rest in peace, he just passed away. But he was my strength and conditioning coach who was a power lifter. And so I was able to like manage like the laxity in my joint and my knee because I didn't have a PCL and like everything else because I got so big and strong. Remember how big and strong I got? Like, yeah. and, and just powerful. Um, so Karini, like, like injury proofed me and I felt wow. fantastic the last three years of my career. And interestingly, all this, that muscle memory, even though I've shrunk, I, I mean, I'm only like hundred and like 90 pounds now down from like 212 when I played, but, uh, all that muscle memory is still there and I still work out a little bit. So I'm able to run marathons and not have any issues. And I do take some supplements, CBD supplements that just give me a, like a, uh, even if it's placebo it's 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 homeostatic right i feel mm -hmm. i feel like my body um is in control without having to put dangerous substances in it mm -hmm. so why why don't you try cannabis my friend there's <laughs> no way you haven't tried an edible tiki uh, oh, well i've yeah. heard i've heard that that edibles don't have an off switch <laughs> so hey, um, you, you gotta, you, you gotta be very I'm careful not, yeah I'm not saying I've never had edibles because I have. Um, I'm just saying it's not a regular part of my existence. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I imbibe in vino. <laughs> <laughs> so Tiki, how do you see yourself uh, getting more involved? Do you see yourself staying in kind of like the advocacy role or do you yeah. see yourself in, in, in an investor role? Or do you see yourself, you know, what do you see yourself doing in, in the industry? Well, you know, I live in Jersey too. I and mean, so uh, just like you and, for a while was a cluster here, um, mainly yeah. because the government, either the executive and, and the legislative side, didn't know how to 
how to process this. Like who was going to take credit for legalizing um, marijuana in the state? And so what they ended up doing is pushing it to referendum. They put it up for vote and obviously it overwhelmingly passed, but there's still so many regulations uh, based on old, like um, on the books rules, like any cannabis uh, operation has to be equidistant, at least medicinal, has to be equal distant in the state apart. So in order for me to open an operation, I'd have to put it in like, I don't know, like, <laughs> like way the hell up north because there's so many concentrated down in, in the south. And so the, the, the business opportunity isn't as vast as it once was unless you get into the supply chain side of it, like the growth and the transport, et cetera. And so the advocacy route has been a way through Siri that I've stayed involved, um, you know, doing a couple of things, research, statistics, like we're trying to reach out to the NFL uh, so that they can have um, a verifiable data on the, the efficacy and it, ultimately the effectiveness of, of CBD and CBD products and TAC products for the health and wellness of their athletes. So those are the type of things that we've been working on. And, and I enjoy it because I feel like I'm helping out my brothers that are coming behind me, who, oh, by the way, all grew up smoking weed, all are doing it now and are looking for a way to like, just push the stigma away, right? There's still a stigma, like it's, 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 it's fading, but there's still a little bit of a stigma about it. You know what I mean? And so I think yeah. if, there, if there's research behind it it, 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 it blows that completely out the window. Do you applaud where the NFL is? They have evolved quite a bit. They're certainly not most definitely where I think they should be, but you do. You, you yeah, mo most, most definitely. I mean, they, they are now treating this, for those who don't know, the NFL is now treating uh, marijuana use, THC, marijuana use, uh, as they would alcohol. So as long as you don't do something stupid, like have a, a, a handle of vodka, get behind the wheel of a car and crash into a telephone pole, then it, you, you're fine. Like you can go have a couple martinis, call an Uber to drive you home and it doesn't matter. Just like you can go smoke a couple joints, uh, get call an Uber to drive you home and you can be fine. But if you uh, become um, subject to a legal investigation because of your use of, of marijuana, just like if you became subject to a legal investigation because of your use of alcohol, that's when the NFL puts you back in that program that, that Imani and I were alluding to. And you, do you see Josh Gordon back in the league? You like yeah. that? That's just another step in their evolution. Yeah, it is. But I mean, he just keeps, he keeps making missteps. I mean, I, I really like his, his, his fight to get back in this game. Yeah. Um, but he keeps having the same issues over and over. And it's not always marijuana. I think this last one was, was actually alcohol um, because he's in that program. That we're the program. About. Yeah. The program is, a, it's rough. It's harsh and it's trying to protect yeah. the guys, right? You know, this to him. They're trying to protect yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm glad he's back. I just hope he doesn't take another misstep. So you talk about the stigma and it is still alive and well, what would it take to change it? At least, I mean, I assume there are a lot of current, stars in the nfl that use oh cannabis. yeah could one yeah. of them come out i mean my assumption is patrick mahomes does that's just my assumption <laughs> he was very supportive very vocally of shakiri richardson yes and that's just the, that's the entire reason that i assume that's a, that's that. a good extrapolation <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so is would that change the stigma if someone like that were to come out and say I, honestly I honestly is 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 impressive and powerful as a player as he is, especially given the, the length and the, the monetary value of his contract. Yes. But I think it, it needs to be higher than him. It needs to be an owner who I'm sure some of them partake. Right? I, 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 uh, I'll right? tell you what, <laughs> I, te I tell you what, when I went to my first dispensary, it was like, it was like the UN, everybody was coming in. You had yeah. people from all over. So it just, it's funny because I was talking to a, a, a mayor of a town today and he was like, yeah, you know, I don't know if, you know, if it's going to be good in this town. And I was like, I'm telling you what well, first time I had experience in a dispensary, it brings everybody, all comers, it brings everybody together. Yeah. And so I think it, you would be very naive if you, th if you thought that there's not one, some are, you know, more of the majority <laughs> of the owners, the majority of the owners are definitely, yeah. you know, 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, but to them, it's a moral, it's a moral thing, right? And so, as soon as that changes, yeah, I, like or someone in that vein, a CEO of of some Fortune 500 company, like as soon as that happens, it all gets destigmatized. It it just be like one of them saying, "Yeah, I smoke camels. Yeah, I like I like the lights. It is what it is." Yeah, right. Well, and so, well, Jobs wasn't he? Wasn't Jobs he, he part yeah, didn't he? Yeah, Steve yeah. Jobs. <laughs> yeah. But um. But so where do you think the NFL should go? Like, what, what is your ideal uh, policy about uh, cannabis? I think, I, think the I think they're on the right track right now. Um, it, they've decriminalized it. So it's, you, you're not going to get punished for smoking marijuana. So, that, so that's, that's step one. I think the next step is, is an advocacy role. Just like we saw um, gambling start to become a part of the vernacular, the the, the, the shield sharing um, in mm -hmm. the NFL. I think when advocacy for the medicinal benefits of marijuana get tested and the e efficacy, as I mentioned before, is proven, then the NFL should get behind it. Because it's not just, I mean, think about the fans of the NFL, right? Some of these people are in hard work in blue collar parts of this country and they, you know, they're in, in steel wheels or, or mines or whatever. They're, they're working with their hands, just like got arthritis. Like the way to like combat that um, in a healthy way is, is with CBD products or THC products. If, if you're looking for the psychedelic, uh, psych, uh, psychedelic effect as well. And so the NFL is, is perfectly positioned because that's their audience, right? Yeah. Right. It's perfectly positioned to be the advocate, and it's going to take time. I mean, I don't yeah. see this happen in the next half a decade. Maybe, maybe it's maybe more than that, but uh, I think in time, that's where they'll go because their players are already there. Yeah, it's I think they're like gambling, right? Yeah. Once they figure out they can profit from it. They're that's there. right. That's exactly there's gonna, right. Everybody is, wants to be the NFL's uh, can, marijuana or cannabis uh, marijuana. Everybody's cannabis partner. Yeah, and uh, I, I think you're right. I think the NFL has an opportunity to do twofold: be an advocacy for everybody, but also help their players because that's, that liver that's the issue, biggest one. That's the biggest that, one. That liver issue is real. I remember when Alonzo Mourning was one of the first players that I remember who had really bad liver and, and kidneys because of these uh, the, the anti-inflammatories, and I started scaling back myself. So I, I think that that they, we should, you know, protect your players, player safety, anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's, you know, and the mental aspect of it. That's right. You know, I, the, the NFL has, uh, uh, the, the players should be at, not guinea pigs, but they should use all the information and help all these medical uh, uh, you know, people who are actually trying to, for the first time in a long time, uh, study what this plan actually can do and the NFL has a great opportunity to be a big uh, play a big role in that. Yeah, you, you're right. They have a what is it every year? Sixteen hundred? Is that what it is? That's the number of players. About sixteen hundred, maybe a little bit more than that. Seventeen hundred yeah. guys to to not test on because I don't want to I don't want to use that words either like testing and guinea. I don't want to use that, but to well, get them all use hopefully. use as a control sample, like a control yeah. sample. Right? They have yeah. the ability to do that. They should um, as long yeah. as they don't like. Like make these guys feel uncomfortable that they're asking, "Hey, do you do you do you smoke?" Right? Like make it make it make it make it comfortable. Don't make it yeah. like, "Are you smoking?" I don't want to yeah. get you in trouble. Right? As long as it's not yeah. like, "Hey, man, tell us about yeah. this. How, why does it benefit you? Why do you feel good um, when you when you do this?" Well, first Which we one? need to Which get you two. We need to get you two to enjoy an edible together. I mean, it seems <laughs> natural. You guys played together for ten years, man. I mean, I I just want to be a fly on the wall for that. That's right. Oh man, to, you were what? To, to him, you were twelve years. You were one year before me and one year after me. I was, or were you thirteen? I was two two years after you. Oh, that's right. One so year you before were, you, two years. I was thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did thirteen. Yeah. Could so, cannabis have prolonged your career then, Tiki? Would Would that have been I mean, something that? Maybe. I mean, part of the reason I retired is that I was just starting to get beat up, man. In two thousand and five, I led the league in touches. I mean, I'm, I'm little, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not Derrick Henry. I had, 400, <laughs> I, I had 411 touches back in 2005 and it just, it wore on me. And so 06, it was just like, man, I'm done, man. I just, I just can't yeah. do it anymore. Physically. Yeah. I, I was, I was just wearing out and you know, I, I, the big plays were 
getting there were still big plays, but they were like shorter big plays. Like 50 yeah. yard runs were becoming 20 yard runs. And yeah, it just it just felt harder. And so yeah. I was I was just ready to do something else. And I didn't think we were gonna be good. I mean, we my last year, which was the year before you guys won to him, we were eight and eight, right? Like we squeaked into the playoffs. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We I was were eight, I, I, we, we, we were eight and eight. That that's right. Yeah, yeah. We were eight and eight. And then the next yeah. year it was just like nine and seven. Maybe they made, the, 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 like they snuck into the playoffs and you guys yeah. got hot, man. It was awesome yeah. to watch. Yeah, yeah. I think we we're ten and ten. Maybe maybe you were ten and ten, six. We we're ten and six. Yeah, we were ten and six. But um, yeah, it's. I I remember one of the reasons why I didn't why I stopped was mentally like you're I was thirty five years old and everybody <laughs> in the league is young. That's so right. I'm walking in the locker room and they're talking funny and they're dressing <laughs> funny and I'm like, man, I feel old. Like I started feeling old and I was only thirty five. So, you know, I I felt like it was. I, I could imagine a guy like you who's. You know, very like I remember used to read the Wall Street Journal all That's the right. time. And right. used to be, and Tiki was a guy that like, if somebody was talking to Tiki, and they started like using language that he didn't really, you know, he wasn't really trying to pick up any slang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, eh, okay, you know, he just like, <laughs> ah, 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 all right, and, and just walk away. And uh, you know, some people thought a certain way. I, mean, I totally understood. I understood, man. Like. <laughs> You, you, you took this education seriously. You had like all these books in your locker and all this stuff. And everybody always making fun of it. And Tiki was one of the first dudes to wear the tight clothes too. That's right. That's right. And we'd all make fun of him. We'd be like, Tiki, we can see your pulse for your pants. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tiki, it's your turn. Well, tell, tell us about the Imani that we didn't get to know. I mean, you know Imani. It's, Imani Toom was, Toom was chill. Toom has always been chill, but he was also, he was chill in your face. I remember this all the time because you mentioned this earlier and, in, and he was talking about, I forget what we were talking about. Uh, oh, the vaccine stuff. How, you know, he would ask him questions. <laughs> if, if Toom had it in his mind that he was right and you were wrong, he would like <laughs> not leave it. He's like down your throat. Like, yeah, but T, yeah, but you know what? If you did this, <laughs> yeah, but you did it, you just did it. <laughs> Back the fuck up, man. <laughs> was all like he was persistent, persistent yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. That's why we love too. Yeah, he'd, he'd get flagged for taunting for that shit. Oh no, he was Toom was the best, man. He'd get away. He'd get away. He was so good he could get away with pushing off. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, there's a way. There's a way to that. do it. I know, but, but nobody does that, it. Uh, what were you saying there? He gets away with pushing off, like uh, offensive pass interference. He could do it. And not get caught for. We watch it on tape all the time and be like, dude, you're cheating. How are you doing <laughs> that? <laughs> you didn't extend. Um, I we do gotta wrap this up because it's Tomb's bedtime. Um, <laughs> I'm curious though. <laughs> I am curious your guys take, and I want to get both your takes on that. And I'll express my opinion that ridiculous taunting penalty that we're seeing each and uh. every week has become one of the stories of the NFL. I have no idea what they're trying to accomplish. See yeah. what you think of it. Well, well, um, the owners and the and I think some of the coaches they hate to see it. Like they hate to see guys get in each other's faces and you know, you know, cross it out, it's incomplete, and you know, spiking the ball in their face. And I get that to an extent, um, but it's the it's the lack of definition of what is taunting that that bothers me a little bit. So last night on Monday Night Football, the Chargers and the Raiders. We're playing, and I don't know when this is airing, but the, the Monday night football game from week Waller, four. Yeah. Yep. Waller catches his first pass of the game, and he's just he's frustrated because he hasn't caught a pass all day. And it's a 15 or 20 yard pass, and he goes to the sideline. He's not looking at anybody. Like the two defenders are behind him. Uh mate, yeah, he's on the Chargers bench and he just spikes it, right? And and they call the, the taunting foul. And so the problem is it's a very subjective call because you can't know intent, right? Some intent is obvious. Like when a guy's in someone's mug, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's intent. You can, you can see his intent. But when intent is ambiguous, you can't throw that foul because it's a, it's a huge foul. It's 15 yards on sports line conduct. And so I understand why they're trying to legislate it out of the game. And early on, it, we, it was plentiful. I mean, we were getting, you know, I think there was 10 or 11 of them in the first couple of weeks of the season, 
Now there's only been about, I think, two or three over the last yeah. couple of weeks. And so they accomplished what they wanted to do. They effectively changed behavior of, 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 the, of the guys on the field, which is a good thing. But I still think there's, there's too much ambiguity, there's too much subject, subjectivity to that call for referees to make. And it's, it's impacting the outcomes of games. And when refs are impacting the outcomes of games, um, it's a bad thing. Two, who I got just, hurt by taunting. I love it. No, I, I, I just feel like when you play football, you're not like we are now sitting down, talking, calm. <laughs> you're in another frame of mind. You're right. a different person. And so, like, I remember watching touchdowns that I scored or do a good plays that I did. And then, like, you're just like, oh, what did I do? Oh, like, <laughs> and you cringe. You're like, what did I do? Oh, my God, that's so bad. You know, because you, you're not thinking. It's like, it's like primitive. It's, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's. That's a great point. It's not like you're sitting there thinking, oh, I'm going to do this. It just happens. You just, when you sit there screaming, ah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a, it was embarrassing for me. So I was yeah. like, oh God, what did I do? And then just like Kiki said, it's like, you can't get in, like whenever you're, if you're asking a referee, not only to call the, the games that are moving this fast, when you're and see if it's inbounds, out of bounds, pushing, holding. Now you're going to ask them to get inside the players' heads and, and and get to and figure out what the players are thinking. That is just a, that is a, a bridge too far. Players are you know he, could, he just like Waller. He was frustrated. Boom! He threw the. And other two players weren't even paying attention. But it's like that's right. To even for even for us to like have this conversation, it's just ridiculous. Because then you see other sports like. You see hockey, you see basketball, you see all this stuff, and there's nothing. It's like I feel like sometimes the NFL, it's it's like an, it's like a, a fraternity, you know, like a you know you go to the fraternity parties, they make the rules, and they just yeah. they know people are always going to come to the parties, so they can just say whatever they want, and people are going to come anyway. So I just feel like it, it's doing more harm than good, and yeah. and fans like seeing emotion because the fans are emotional. That's right. So you want players to go and play and be like robots, like great touchdown. But no, <laughs> <laughs> I just made a good play. Thing. You know, just tap five. Because I remember watching High five, games. man. High I, five. I, remember, I remember watching games from the 80s and it was like, yo, that guy just made like an incredible play. And he gets up and he, he just, he doesn't do anything. He like looks <laughs> down and I'm like, man, you got to show a little more emotion, get more excited. Let everybody know how excited you are. And so I think it's good for the game, but I think it can go too far. But I think legislating it is like, yeah, it's it's just it's just you, you can't you don't want to damper players' emotion. I mean that's yeah. half the fun of the game. And by the way, Dave, there was already a mechanism in place for taunting, right? If you, if you did something egregious, you you get a personal foul or an unsportsmanlike contact. It was already there. So this isn't a new rule. It's just a point of emphasis. So now they're taking something that they were already doing and like making it hypersensitive. And that's the problem. It's an emotional sport. It's a physical sport. I mean, where else in the world can you go? I mean, other sports, obviously, boxing and hockey, but you will beat the crap out of somebody for 60 minutes. Seriously. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, yeah. And, 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 and not be emotional about it. You got to. Right, and John Randall was playing. Now you remember him, the two of the oh, yeah. Vikings. Yeah, 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 that dude would not shut up. His no. mouth ran for the entirety of the game. Even when he was on the sideline, you could hear his ass. He's like, "John, shut up!" Right? <laughs> he, he'd be called. He'd be called for a, a flag fifteen times a game. Seriously, he'd get kicked out of games because he just never would stop. And it's not like he was taunting. That was just him, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Like, it's it's, like Dick Bucket. Know. Yes. Dick Buss the same way. Like he would get to he put his finger <laughs> in people's faces. You can't do that anymore. I know. But I mean, yeah. people loved it when Dick Buckus did it. So right. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't either. I We're don't all either. for taunting. We're all for cannabis. I guess we'll wrap it up with a, a high, high five. High five. High five. High five. <laughs> Good to see you, boys. Amani, a real high five. <laughs> high five. High <laughs> five. <laughs> well played. That's a good way to end it. Good to see you boys. Amani Toomer, Tiki Barber, two of the all-time great giants. Oh, by the way, is Tiki a Hall of Famer, Toom? 
I don't. I mean, you you can't not put Tiki. I don't understand why Tiki's not in. I, I it, it really bothers me. It really does. I don't know. We agree on all of it. You're a Hall of Famer. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. I know my brother's getting in, so I mean, at least I'll be there in like half the fight. I got <laughs> that split and became him. But you know what? They don't like it when players leave on their own. They don't like it. Yeah, you got to go out on your shield. That's true. It's a good point. On their shield, you mean? On their shield, yeah, yeah, their shield. They'll tell you when you're done. We're not. <laughs> you're not done with you. We'll tell you when you're done. Well, we think you'll get in. We'll enjoy that day. Good appreciate to see you guys. Boys. Take care, guys. All right.